So now we moved on to chapter two of my book. We're going to look at uh, a complete sample essay to show you how these strategies and techniques we've been looking at so far can be uh, folded into a sample essay. Um, so guys, take a look on page 19. And uh, look in the middle of the page under sample essay. We're going we're gonna to discuss this abbreviated prompt, every advance involves some loss or sacrifice. Pretty broad-based prompt, yes? And what are the key components? Once again, drama. Any kind of content example that involves drama can be utilized for this essay. So we're going to start out here with the first paragraph. Most people in America, if not the world, would agree that every advance involves some sacrifice. So what you want when you start off your essay, your first sentence, your introduction, you want to make a broad, sweeping statement that kind of establishes context and tells the reader the general context in which we're going to be writing about. So most people in the world, pretty broad. If not, most people in America, pretty broad. If not the world, would agree that every advance involves some sacrifice. In fact, a common sports adage proclaims, no pain, no gain. Nice quote. Everybody's familiar with it? Was it a tough quote to come up with? No, it's part of the uh, popular culture. And then what about this transition here? In fact, nice transition. Utilize good writing style by putting those transitions in to give your writing more spark. No pain, no gain was the quote. Put it in quotes, show the reader that you can uh, appreciate external ideas. And then once you include a quote in your essay, put it in your own words. So the next passage, next sentence is, in other words, progress is always accompanied by a certain amount of loss. And that really is your encapsulation of the prompt, every advance involves some loss, that's your topic sentence. So you start out with a broad sweeping statement, you mix in some quotes or anecdotes, you put things in your own words if you quote them, and then you hit them with the thesis, and then you move on and tell the reader where you're going. I call this last sentence of the first paragraph a roadmap. And the roadmap here is, this concept is illustrated throughout history, literature, and personal experience. How are we doing? Any questions? So that's a pretty representative uh, intro for an essay. It encapsulates the prompt, gives some quotes, gives some broad sweeping uh, um, introduction, and then hits the reader with uh, the structure. We're going to utilize history, literature, and personal experience. So moving on to the next paragraph. One compelling illustration. So the second paragraph. One compelling illustration. What do we call that? One compelling illustration that. A transition. Transition. It's a transition that moves you from one paragraph to the next. Mark of a good writer. So after the transition, then you go back and repeat your topic sentence. Very important. You always want to repeat the prompt every paragraph. This not only tells the reader that you're on message, that you're following a logical path, but it also increases your word count and keeps the pencil moving. So one compelling illustration that some bad always accompanies some good, that's the paraphrasing of the prompt, is, a, is demonstrated in the Civil Rights Movement. So there's your content example that you're going to use in your first uh, content paragraph. In 1955, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the bus to a white person. Now, what if you can't remember what year it was? Should you stop, put the pencil down, sit back in your chair and think and lose precious time? No. no. What should you do? Make, you know, it make it up. It's not a fact-based test. It's a writing test. So don't stumble over dates or places or people. Just fill them in and keep writing. Use your imagination. Imagination, as Einstein said earlier, is more important than knowledge. Or in the case of the SAT, facts. Remember, law students can make up laws. You guys can make up whatever you want to impress the reader with your writing style. So in 1960, in 1957, in 1964, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the bus to a white person. Although she was arrested in jail, comma, her brave efforts inspired the Montgomery, Montgomery bus boycott, which lasted for over a year. What do we call that lead-in? Although she was arrested in jail, comma? Yes, yeah, Sarah. Subordination. Subordination. Mark of a good writer. Subordination. So, although she was arrested in jail, her brave efforts inspired the, what if you can't remember which bo bus boycott it was? Make it, Make, it up. Up. Make it up. Make it up. Montgomery bus boycott, Alabama bus boycott, Louisiana bus boycott, doesn't matter. The key thing is to add details to your content because the mark of a good writer, along with subordination transitions and flash vocab, is details, details, 
details. So don't skip on the details. Even if you don't know them, make them up because it shows the reader that you understand the components of good writing. Question? I was just going to ask if you didn't know, can you just skip it or you answered it? It's more important to... Yeah, it's more important to actually pin it down. Why? Because details are important. And if you just skip it, that's what a bad writer would do. It would be too abstract. But by including the details, even if they're not true, it shows the reader that you know that details are important for good writing. And that's the key component of your analysis here. You want to be judged in your writing ability, not your historical ability. It's not a history test. It's a writing test. Okay, moving on. Um, who comes up next? Martin Luther King was inspired by her example and became known as one of the most admired figures of the civil rights movement. Now, if you're going to bring in MLK, you want to have details. What did he do? What were the key things that he did, brought to the table? Well, he organized hundreds of what kind of protests? Nonviolent. Nonviolent. Not just he organized protests, he organized nonviolent protests and gave an unforgettable speech. Should we leave it at that or should we name the speech and put it in quotes to show that we have some historical perspective? Quotes. quotes. Unforgettable speech entitled, quote unquote, I have a dream. So now we've got some key components of Martin Luther King, some good detail. And then together, Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks helped get the Civil Rights Act of 1965 <laughs> passed. Yeah, and don't go too far out of the bounds of reality. Don't, you know, move to 1492 <laughs> or 1766. But don't worry if you're not exactly correct. Um, the readers cannot and should not hold that against you because it's not a history test. And then finally, unfortunately, what do we call that? Unfortunately? Uh, transition. Transition, exactly. Mark of a good writer. Transitions. Unfortunately, the social progress was accompanied by a tragic sacrifice, the assassination of Dr. King by a summit madman. And there's a good content example with a lot of detail, with good writing, transitions, subordination, and details, details, details. So now we're ready to move on to the second paragraph, second and second content paragraph. And once again, we start with what? We start with a transition, and then we recap the topic sentence. One more time. Every time we move to a new paragraph, very important point, we're going to recap the topic sentence. Why? It shows the reader that we're on rails. We're following a logical progression. We've got the prompt, and here's our content example that supports it. And over and above that, what does it do? Sets us up for the paragraph. Sets us up for the paragraph, and it increases our word, word count. Increases our word count. Yes, Sarah. Does it matter which content example you do first? Like, should you do best to worst? As I, it, it doesn't really. Some readers are a little bit uh, tired of seeing civil rights used so often, so you might want to push civil rights down to your third example. Um, but really, it's more the writing that counts than it does the... Uh, the, uh, the order in which you put the uh, content examples. Okay. But along the same lines, I usually recommend that kids do their personal experience uh, paragraph last because it's more impressive to talk about history or literature or music or sports or whatever first. More of an external content example than an internal content example. Make sense? Yeah. All right, so let's keep going now. The theme. The theme that every advance also involves some loss. Recap in the topic sentence. Occurs in Nathaniel Hawthorne's novel, The Scarlet Letter. What if you can't remember who wrote The Scarlet Letter? Should you stop, agonize, and lose precious time? Should you leave a blank? Good writers know who wrote it, so you want to fill in the blank with someone who did write it. So if you can't remember, it's Nathaniel Hawthorne, Scott Fitzgerald, mm -hmm. Ernest Hemingway, Robert Smith, mm -hmm. Rachel McAdams. Whoever comes to mind, put it in as a placeholder and move on. Details. Then, we're talking about the Scarlet Letter. Should we talk about the main character, Hester Prynne? Yeah. Yeah, but should we, should we use the phrase, the main character? Protagonist. No, we should say the protagonist. protagonist. Take out the $2 word, put in a $5 word. Flash vocab. Protagonist is much more impressive than main character. So, moving on, the, the protagonist, Hester Prynne, is charged with adultery and is forced to wear a scarlet letter A embroidered on her dress. Although the Puritan community shuns her for her sins, comma, what's that called when I have a long lead-in before I get to the main sentence? Subordination. Yes. 
Hester decides to reform her character by doing selfless charity work. Oh, she's overcoming obstacles. As a result of her philanthropic character, once again, I've got a long leading before I get to the main sentence. What do we call that? Subordination. Subordination. As a result of her philanthropic character, nice word philanthropic, what does it mean? Charitable giving. Charitable giving, exactly. But instead of saying charitable or giving, philanthropic. Philanthropic. Put a $5 word in. So as a result of her philanthropic character, the society changes its view of Hester and eventually thinks of the scarlet A on her dress as representing the word able. So there's her progress and overcoming of obstacles. And then through hard work and sacrifice. What do we call that? Before we get to the main sentence, I'll lead in. Subordination. Subordination. So through her hard work and sacrifice, Hester is able to move forward with her life and become a valued member of the community. So do you see how a simple paragraph like this with enough detail and enough transitions and subordination sounds very fluid and very intelligent and very impressive. It's all because of the writing style. That's why I'm stressing subordination and transitions, and I'm not stressing facts. If you can bring in the facts, fine. If you can't, fill them in, make them up. Imagination is more important than facts on the SAT essay. 